How you doing well, folks? Another topology talk. The Order, 1886. A little bit different this time. Did a little bit of a, a, a little bit of mirror research. Mirror, mirror some good stuff, you know. Uh, wanted to point out a few things that I might forget about when talking on the fly. We'll probably keep this for the future. Um, mirror is a good way to get some thoughts out on this stuff. So let's look at the Order, 1886 now. Got some wireframes, got the artist names in the corner. Firstly, The Order 1886, another one of these games that over 10 years ago still holds up to this day. And we get to see juicy wireframes. So let's have a look. So we, let's take in the, the beauty shot first. So uh, this is from uh, Nestor Car Carpintero. Sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, the beauty shot, let's take it in for a moment. Okay, juice factor is pretty high. And let's go to the topology. So if you've been following along with this series, you know, we did the Naughty Dog one, the God of War one, the prop one, and now this one, you're probably going to see things and think, okay, I know why they've done that. And if you have, that's awesome. Um, because we a lot of these things are universal, right? They're good ways to inform you about how to do your topology for your environment art. And even though this stuff is 10 years ago, um, there's some of it, you know, some of it holds up still. Like if you're doing a building, your wireframe will probably look like that in 2024, you know? So um, let's have a look. So what notes have I pulled out? So Window Arch uses different um, UV split for different textures. So we've got these Window Arches here. And this is a very common technique, right? You get these sort of, um, I don't know the architectural name for it, but you get these vertical stacked bricks um, where the top of the window is. And the way the artist is doing it here is because you you wouldn't need this if you weren't doing it. You would target weld up into the corner. However, this strip of polygons, oh, see, I've got, yeah, there we go. Power of Miro, so good. So this strip, oh my God, what was that line? Hold on, there we go. Artist, by the way, this strip of polys is there so that that can be straightened in the UV and mapped to a different texture, which is why you see vertical bricks and then horizontal bricks. So it could be a different texture or the same texture rotated. There's a few different methods for it. Another thing that we're actively seeing here is the active mitigation of thin triangles. Now, this advice, I've heard this a lot over the years, thin triangles cause more hassle when rendering in a game engine. Now, the thing is, I agree. However, I've seen lots of thin triangles make it into games and not cause issues. So I don't know how relevant that advice is, but it's, it's is good to see chunky triangles either way. You know, I do actively try and keep away from thin triangles, but if I have one in an area, I'm not I'm not too fussed about it. You know, I, I haven't seen this cause issues um, in any of the stuff I've worked on, but it's still valid advice, right? You never know what studio you're going to work at. You might work on an engine where thin triangles cause a lot of issues. So instead of the artist um, target welding like this, which you can, you know, you sometimes see, you target weld to each corner, uh, they're target welding to the corners and then they're going up uh, like this. And that's to keep the triangles chunky, um, especially 10 years ago. Yeah, it probably was more of an issue, right? Uh, same here. Keeping the triangles chunky as much as possible because thin triangles are a bit of a bottleneck. Um, again, it's not something I run into have, have seen, um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Remember, games industry, there's lots of things different it depends. It depends. That's that's the word, right? It depends if you ask somebody a question about a certain workflow, like metallic maps, should they have gray in? It depends is uh, often the answer. And then sometimes you get people on either side of the fence. So, yeah, so the windows. Uh, so what else did I point out here? No, that's good. Uh, unique signage. So this is a floating plane. And this is a floating plane, and this is a floating plane, and that drives the text. You know, this text here, 
because it's flexible. <clears throat> you see this a lot with uh, games that have roads and motorways in. They will make the green highway sign with no text on in the texture, and then they will just use planes with decals on because if you commit to a texture on a highway uh, sign and you put the actual road markings and this and that, you are now not able to use that over and over. Whereas if you just have, for example, a tiling brick wall and then some decals on top, you can change the text to whatever you want to do. So I know in Unreal, you can get this to stamp on automatically, but again, not every studio uses Unreal. So using floaters with planes with alpha mapped text on is the way to go. Again, active mitigation on thin triangles, but they get thin anyway in some areas mapping a texture over to the side. It looks like we've got some bevels here as well, uh, which again, we but we still bevel corners to this day because if you don't bevel a corner, it looks very CG. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, let's go down to the next one. So interior, so what notes have we got here? So let's, firstly, let's take in the beauty shot. It's pretty cool. All right, let's go up. Look at the wireframe, pretty cool. And what's some what's some callouts that we've got? So we've got lots of polygons on arches to avoid low poly object looking curvy. So I've said this many times with anything that is curved, you see this 10 years ago, you still see it today. Put polygons into arches. You know, um, if this was, for example, a bit like this, right? If these segments here were the arch, you would see this sort of, and again, if you're working on a stylized game, sure. You would see this horrible fasting. Like you don't need to save polys on the arches for hyper-realistic games. Put the polys in. And the same sort of thing again, probably mapping a separate texture on the arch. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like something is going on here for that to be a separately mapped texture. We've also got a different sort of brick on the edge here. So um, that's why you've got those in. And then you know, I, I call this technique tri fanning. Tri fanning is basically where you, you target weld inwards after coming from a, an arch or a, a cylinder. So if you don't need the amount of polygons you were using to define a silhouette, you can target weld them and you will start to fan in on uh, triangles. You'll probably find an, another asset with an example of it in here somewhere, um, but we'll keep looking. And what did we put in this section? Oh uh, yeah, the classic, right? Model out the textures if they're destroyed. So, you know, there's pro, let's have a look. How's this look in the beauty shot? So yeah, this is, um, there's a few ways to do this, but what this is, this is probably a, let's just have a look at the wireframe. Okay, so this is probably a tiling brick texture with vertex painting of the white paint. And then you just cut your wireframe around the brick. Pretty cool way to do it. There's a more, um, if you, nowadays you would make a hero brick that was sculpted and not always, but you know, you can in a lot of cases and you would slot that in to the wall. Gives you a, cause this technique is fine, but if you get up close to it, it starts to break a little bit because at the end of the day, you're modeling out the tiling texture. So you're not really gonna get the bricks on the edge here aren't really going to look that good up close um, in the grand scheme of things. So uh, just be, be wary on that. Um, so yeah, modeling out the brick on there. Good old vertex painting. So the verts on the floor allow you to blend from one vert to another. In this case, they're blending this sort of um, dust texture. And the power of having the vertex points is you can blend the dust texture, paint out the blend mask if you need to, and focus it around corners um, as well, which is what's being done here. So we've got this sort of edging, and it just helps you break up the floor of big tiling textures. And another interior. So here's some of that tri fanning we're talking about. So um, you often have more edges on a silhouette. And then when you get to sort of a not so much important area where you don't need as many polygons, you just target weld um, those verts 
and then you go from sort of a quad to a quad to a try and you can just target well down um you see it happening here as well right there are more segments on the outside of this curved shape because it's curved however the inside it doesn't matter that much because it's contained within the silhouette of this big sort of uh, pipe separator so because it's uh, contained you can just target weld in to a lower polygon cylinder and I, I, you know the term i have for that is tri fanning right so instead of going in on every sort of um, quad like that you just target weld in instead and that's why you get that sort of look on some of these round shapes uh, which is cool still very relevant today i'd say as well um anything else going on here that looks special i don't think so um we've got no notes for it so uh but yeah it's just good to see the density of stuff really um so and there's the textured version so i believe there is a floating plane maybe like here i think this is a floating plane and that again floating plane is probably this decal because sometimes vertex painting is good for a uh, big surface variation but when you have something really specific looking um sometimes it's better to use uh, a decal you know like a leaking decal or a very specific edge decal Whereas vertex painting can get you broader variation on a textured surface. And then another interior. So I believe there's a beauty shot. So it's nice, moody, dark. Again, lots of polys. Like, they ain't messing around, right? Look how many polys they're using to sell arches. Arches are so important to not make look low poly and scuffed, right? So... Um, and again, target welding out because you don't need to carry this amount of vertex points outwards and upwards. It's just wasteful. So you're using it on the arch. And then as soon as you get to a flat surface where you only need a few verts to blend with your brick texture, as soon as you get to uh, where the shape isn't getting silhouetted, you just start target welding. And again, active effort is being made here to keep the cries fat nice and chunky so uh, what notes have we got here yep so use polys on curved objects that's very important keeps the player immersed in the game world and then a center loop good for symmetry yep so this loop here just lets you split the mesh in half again if you have to work on it also lets you mirror the uv so that you can save uv space because textures are always the resource hog in comparison to polygons um, in a lot of cases. And then with the windows, I was wondering why the windows were quadded like this, right? So, you know, on each window, there is a very clean border. Um, and I was, I was trying to think of why they're doing that, right? Instead of just having it flat. And what I believe is happening is um, if we find a window in one of these images, I believe that there is probably some sort of frost trim sheet esque um, texture that is mapped to the quads um, in this area. So that's what I think is happening, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's obviously the cut in there for a reason. Um, so we're on about these sort of, yeah, these sort of cuts here. So I think there's a bit of frost edging being done maybe with an of a pasty uh, a pasty mask and then um, maybe the quartering it as well uh, with the edge loop in the middle and then yeah modeling around the texture for the broken glass um is there anything else you'll notice as well in a, a lot of these old school games um they will use floating sort of decal planes with cuts in like this, there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? But that is to get this sort of sort of marking where the wagon has gone through and caused like, you know, some marks on the road. You can do spline tools with that in a lot of engines nowadays, but you can never go wrong with the plane method, right? The plane method will, uh, will sort you out in that regard. So with this one, we're kind of rebuilding on what we've covered before. 
which is good because if you start to look at multiple games and their wireframes, and as we start to move on with this series and we move on to the more modern games where we can find wireframes, you'll start to have an informed opinion uh, about how you do topology. So if you work with somebody and they say, hey, you should never, you should never use triangles in your game mesh, you know that that's bullshit because you have done the research and you've actually gone out there and seen what has happened and you've seen how the professionals have optimized their meshes. And you can back up all of your decisions when you're learning of what you're doing. And you know what a good topology level should look like um, as well. So that is the Order 1886 Topologies talk. Again, very beautiful game, very sensible topology usage. Um, a lot of the similar patterns. Obviously, the new concept today was the tri fanning. So, you know, you don't need as many edges if it's not defining to a silhouette versus if it is. And these pipes here are a, a good example of that as well. But yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. There's always a lot of good comment and uh, educational stuff that gets posted by other people as well who have either worked on the games or have. Um, worked on similar games like it so check those out and hopefully today's topology talk has uh helped you in that regard as well next game not 100 sure we'll keep an eye out but uh, i probably want to do some trim sheet stuff next so we'll probably look at that but in the meantime peace